It's not a camcorder, it's not a DSLR, it's not even a mirrorless camera. The most underrated YouTube camera, for me at least, is the Canon EOS C200. You can pick one up for under two grand here in the UK, and though it's about seven years old this year, that shouldn't stop you considering one for YouTube and online video. I owned one for 18 months. I actually sold my Blackmagic Pocket 6K and my Sony a7 III to afford the C200. And quite frankly, that might have been the easiest 18 months of camera ownership I've ever had. See, there are two big things going for the C200 when it came out. Ultra HD 4K video and really good autofocus. Two things that up until this point we hadn't really seen in the broadcast cinema documentary style camera, if you will. And notice I said this is a YouTube camera. I don't think this is the sort of camera that anyone doing proper paid client work should really consider because it's, let's face it, a little bit outdated, but you don't need all of that stuff just for YouTube. Because sure, this thing can shoot raw light to a CFast 2 card. It's not what I'd call exceptional quality compared to the footage from the likes of the aforementioned Blackmagic Pocket cameras, or even your average Panasonic or Sony camera these days. But the MP4 codec is absolutely good enough for making videos that aren't necessarily the sort of crazy high budget things that you might want raw recording, crazy color information, amazing chroma sub sampling, log profiles for example. The majority of creators like me who make content for websites or for YouTube, happily the 4208 bit codec will do and is a really nice looking codec. But you can get all of this in a standard mirrorless or DSLR, so what makes the C200 a really good YouTube camera? Well, there are four main things for me. And firstly, we have to talk about the built-in NDs. They are so useful to have, not only to give you the NDs in the first place if you don't own any beforehand, but also the fact that when you change lenses, you don't have to try different step up rings, change and bring different kinds of filters. It's all in body, it all changes internally, and you can whack whatever lens you want on the front of it. This is perfect for maintaining the 180 degree shutter angle rule, which is something I always try to adhere to because I think that beyond that, for a lot of this online recording stuff, it just looks really jarring when you have to crank your shutter way up. Next up is the built-in audio. This has two body-mounted XLR ports and body-mounted is important. My FX6, there has to be the XLR ports on the handle. So when you take the handle off, you lose the XLR. But in the C200, it's all in body and you get the three and a half mil if you want to run a cheap little Rhodes lav like this. The preamps aren't perfect, but I think they sound really good and they definitely held up for me. I wasn't bothering with any kind of external recorder when I've been using mine over the past 18 months to do all of my YouTube work all the audio goes straight in the camera. Then there's the battery life. Because it's a larger style camera, you get larger batteries. And even one of the second hand BPA batteries that I had in my C200 would last me hours of shoot time where the equivalent mirrorless camera, like my the A7 III that I had before in the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, which was notoriously bad for battery life, just couldn't keep up with the huge batteries in the C200. And my C200 only had the smaller variant. It didn't have the elongated bigger battery which could have given even more battery life. And this body lends itself to terrific ergonomics and handheld ability. So sure, the mirrorless cameras can be really nice for just taking something light out and about. The C200, all of, all of its buttons on the side, making it really easy to feel out. And then all of the other bits and pieces that you might want on the actual body itself. The side handle is really nice with the record button. The top handle is really nice. You can remove both of those absolutely no problem and still get full functionality out of it. It's just really ergonomic. The EVF is also fantastic. And one of the main things I miss on my FX6 in fact, the FX6 is the only reason I don't have my C200 anymore. I found an unreal, unbeatable used uh, deal on my FX6, which is the camera I wanted initially when looking at the C200. I just had to go for it. And to pay for it, I really did have to sell my C200. Despite what all the camera nerds online will tell you, for most things you do not need 422 10-bit. In fact, a lot of NLEs don't even provide support for hardware decoding on anything above 4208-bit. That's why when you drop your crazy high quality footage into your timeline, your computer basically just craps itself. It doesn't have hardware decoding built into the software in a lot of cases, not all cases. And 420 is far easier to work with. Some of the best footage I've ever seen other people shoot has been with 4208 bit. And there's a reason for it. As long as you can master your lighting, you really don't need that extra uh, linearity. Latitude is the word I was looking for there. It might not be the perfect camera or the most beautiful thing on the planet, but the Canon C200 is massively underrated for YouTube. 